guys, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. This is gonna be one of those different videos. I have been having some things on my mind and I was like, do I make a video addressing these various topics? Do I come onto my channel and address certain things? Or do I just make a video and kind of speak at a high level about what's going on? And I thought that the best place to start would just to be starting at a high level. And if you know me, you know that I cover so many different topics on this channel. I am probably most well known for the Duggars and my cover of the Fundamentalists. But I also have over the years covered YouTube con controversies, uh, true crime, and a whole host of reality shows. And I was thinking because lately there's been a lot of drama happening in the YouTube world. There's been a lot of disruptions. There's been a lot of chaos. There's been Gabby Hanna and there was a phone call that was released uh, where Jesse Smiles basically outs her for being a terrible human being. There was this humongous blow up between Trisha and Ethan Klein about frenemies and the podcast is over. And I can't believe I have sat through seven of Trisha's videos. I'm not kidding. I watched all seven of her videos and I still don't really understand what's going on, nor do I have a better understanding of what to think, feel, or, you know, care about. And I watched Ethan's video for his point of view. And I was like, okay, somewhere between here and there is the truth. Either way, it felt like a private conversation that was happening so publicly. And there was the recent revelation of a creator who has made multiple videos about me very critically, who had a, who had been posting anonymously on a farm page called LOL cow or lol cow and had been outed by the admins basically because she was self promoting and had apparently put her sister's Twitter account in there, which they felt was releasing personal information of someone that was not a public figure. And so they ended up going out and unloading all of her data and a lot of the stuff that she was saying in there very well contradicted what she was putting on her channel. And people are in the art community and in the commentary community really, really frustrated and people are making all of these videos. I have had my own peace of mind about this and had have had a lot to say on Twitter and on Instagram as I am trying to reconcile what she created about me, which I have said repeatedly was false. And in the middle of all of this, I started thinking about how we spend so much time on this platform and just in our channels, you know, trying to convince people to watch our channels or trying to tell people that we need to be your, like, we want you to view us. And sometimes in that competition, there is this need for other creators to expose one another, which is never an aspect of, of YouTube that I've ever loved. I don't like the aspect of YouTube where we hang on to screenshots and once we know what happened we can drop our receipts and we can expose people to our audience and then you can decide between two friends who you believe and trust me i have had my fair share of those videos but i've tried to remain drama free on my end on this channel so that i can maintain a sense of safe safety for my viewers but i was realizing something and this was it was that we as viewers get invested in the people that we watch. Sometimes when we're watching someone, we forget that every person that's on YouTube is a human. Sometimes we forget that every person that we watch or scroll through on Instagram is a person that has a story, that has a unique perspective, and that is not all things good or not all things bad. For most of us, we are not perfect. For most of us, we will make mistakes. For most of us, we will say things that we regret. We will learn and have to sometimes stumble publicly. We will have meltdowns. We might have a what perceived some people to be as episodes where we can't stop tweeting or we can't stop publishing videos or we have to get our side out. And I think a lot of it has to do with this 
idea that once an audience decides that they don't like you, it's really hard to repair the damage that's done. I learned a lot in the last year, a ton. I learned a lot about how to cover stories. I recognized areas where I could improve. I realized areas that I made mistakes and I took steps to really on this channel, make this a place where I tried to be as accurately as accurate as possible, including all disclaimers and making sure that my audience was understood that anything that I'm presenting is my opinion and based on the information that I have at the time and you form your own opinion and don't send hate to anyone. I think sometimes as creators, and this is really why I stepped away from covering YouTube content for the most part, is it becomes a place where everyone is fighting for the same pie. Everyone wants the same viewers. Everyone wants to draw attention and get more subscribers. And sometimes that means we need to expose people in order to scrub sub subscribers from them. I get a lot of messages every single day about all the hate channels that exist about me or all the videos that are made about me. In honesty, I really don't watch them. Sometimes I see a title and I might click and look at comments, but for the most part, I can't remember the last time I actually watched a video that was made about me. Do I recognize that my name gets views? I do. Do I recognize that the videos that are made about me are opinions? I do. Do I also recognize that a lot of the stuff that's said about me is false? I do. The funny thing about YouTube is that we can start to, no matter whether it's true or false, paint people in a way that they are not in real life. And we sometimes can assume someone is someone they are not simply by the image that they present and they gaslight you into believing or manipulate you into believing you that they are something good while other people are bad. I've never been the kind of person to try to retaliate against anyone. I've definitely had to curtail my reactions. I've tried to take the higher road almost always, and that's not easy <laughs> at all. In this world where you feel like your reputation is everything, and in a world where you feel like no matter what you're doing, you know that you could potentially make somebody upset, and no matter what you do, no matter if you say something or don't say something, you really can't win. I'm watching this right now with Trisha Paytas. She's uploading a ton of videos and I feel like I'm watching a woman that really wants people to could hear you, understand, and convince you so that you don't hate her. I also think she likes to make the money. I mean, who wouldn't if you're getting millions of views? But her reputation matters to her and so she's, she's uploading like seven videos. In the case of Creep Show Art, when she was outed, she disappeared off the internet. She has removed uh, most of her like photos off of her Instagram. Her Twitter is gone. It has been for a while. And she hasn't published a video in almost a week. And she has been blaming a pseudo stalker that, you know, she says uploaded all this content on her IP and it wasn't her that wrote the things that they did. And in the middle of it, I've been trying to recognize that, whoa, this is what this person was doing and she made these videos about me and I wish that people understood that the videos that she made about me were not true, but I can't change that narrative. Because even if I say that I'm hurt, people will say that I'm playing the victim. And if I bring it to my channel and I complain, then they'll say I'm contributing to drama. And so no matter what, as a human, we just have to recognize sometimes that the people that we look up to are going to disappoint us. And what I've learned more than anything and the last two full years that I've been on YouTube is that you really, if you want to be a viewer, just never assume that a creator is not going to disappoint you. Never believe a creator blindly. Never assume that everything a creator says is true. Never look at a person on YouTube as someone that's infallible, incapable of making a, a mistake. When we start holding YouTubers and influencers up to standards like that, there's literally no way for anyone to succeed. And instead of creators, instead of tearing one another down, perhaps we could stop trying to cancel each other and maybe having dialogues where we can work things out instead of trying to hurt one another through exposed videos. I think a lot about my earlier days on YouTube, in the very beginning, not understanding the magnitude of the power of this platform, 
and I understand so much how easily it can be to hurt someone that you collaborate with or that you slighted or how easily it is for someone who believed they had a relationship with you, believed you did something and then create a narrative about you. You can't control how other people react to you. You can't control that some people want to make content just to get views. And you certainly can't control what everyone thinks about you. And so for me, I've been wanting to address the situation. I've been wanting to say, this is how I'm feeling about what is going on with creep show art. But I haven't felt like I can in a safe place. I also feel like anytime I try to speak, people are telling me that my story isn't valid or that I'm just playing the victim. So instead of dragging her, which I have, I've said some things, I was really angry when I found this out. Instead of dragging her, I would just say, I have empathy and sympathy for anyone that would go to links to create sock accounts, to uh, be completely different um, in, in real life than they are on YouTube. I have compassion for anyone because they can't be well. Like, I don't think happy people do that kind of stuff. I don't think happy people try to cancel people for everything that they're doing on, in private publicly. I don't think people who are happy have two completely polar opposite personalities. So in my mind, as much as I want to drag her and relish in this, I had to process what I felt when it was happening to me when I was the target and how terrible that felt. And I would only suggest to anyone that's watching all of this out there to remember that anyone at any time can become a target of anyone on this platform. And there's no joy in watching somebody get canceled. Is it karma? Sure. Is it shocking? Yes. But behind every cancellation is actually a real person that is getting dogpiled, is getting berated is getting like everyone coming at them, everyone screaming at them, everyone yelling at them, the whole internet hating them. That's a really ugly place to be. And I will tell you from my own experience this fall, it was the worst experience of my life. It also shaped me to where I am today to make me stay a lot more quiet, to make me stay more on my channel, to not interact as much with YouTubers, to keep to myself, to putting out my content, and to recognizing that I can't try to convince people that what was said about me is not true, because no matter what I say, there are people that literally think I'm a terrible human. And that sucks, because I know that I'm not. But either way, if that's what they want to think about me, I just have to accept that. I wish that the creators that were a part of her community that were participating in this behavior with her and doing the targeting of other people and creators and channels would recognize that they too, you know, we all have a responsibility in how we put content out, the messages that we put out and whether or not we're being malicious or we are trying to destroy our competitors or whether or not we're just trying to get a free few bucks or if it just doesn't matter. But this idea of anyone dogpiling on anyone to cancel anyone is a place that I'm at in 2021 that I don't want to be a part of anymore. I haven't made a video on canceling really anyone. The only person I truly want canceled right now is Josh Duggar. And I think that's with valid reasons because he's done terrible things. And really anyone that physically harms children or women. That's like what I'm dedicated on, canceling the IBLP and canceling Josh Duggar. <laughs> but I realize I can't. So the much as I can do is provide you guys content and insight about these topics. But at the end of the day, I think we all just could be a little bit nicer to everyone. Allow people to make mistakes allow people to apologize, allow people to change and grow and develop, and stop holding people accountable when it's really not our job or our place.
We always talk about how we need people to be held accountable, but I've realized over time is that you can't hold someone accountable that doesn't want to take responsibility. That if you push and push and push, you can't force someone to own up to anything that you perceive they've done wrong. I could never in a million years make Josh Duggar admit what he did, do the right thing and take and plead guilty. I could never in a million years make Jim Bob Duggar admit to how he contributed to all of this. I can't. That's not my job. And I think sometimes as reporters and as commentary channels, we feel like it's our mission to ruin or to end people, but it's not. All it does is create so much hate and tension for the people that we that are targeted. It's just ends up being stressful. And then what if who you're targeting, you get the story wrong? What if you target someone who didn't do the things that they, you said that they did? What happens to the collateral damage of people that are being falsely accused every single day on this platform for things they haven't done? It happens so frequently and it's sad. And I wish so much that more of us could just take a moment to reflect and like think about how the responsibility we have with our platforms. And instead of just like trying to get a few clicks and a few views to actually think about the people behind all of the content that we're making. I think a lot about how I may have covered people in the past and how I might have been abrasive or rude or cruel. And I think people have a right to have in it, you know, have a right to be frustrated with how I might have conducted my content years ago, even a year ago. But I think if you watch my channel now, you'll see a growth and you'll see change because I do feel like kindness goes a lot further than hate. That you can tell a story without being cruel. And that as long as you remember the people behind the stories that you're telling and you don't try to cause that person harm just because you're mad at them is what matters. It's like, that's how I think. Like if everyone I'm covering, I don't want to cause them more harm. Everyone that I talk about, no matter if it's a YouTuber or a reality star, I'm just doing a better job these days of remembering that every single person is a human and remembering that every person behind every story has thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and that every person that we cover is more than just a name. Sometimes I feel like it's so easy to forget that the people that we're covering are humans. And when you start to realize that, and you realize how quickly you can be that person that everyone's talking about, and you can become the meme or the, the butt of the jokes, you kind of recognize that nobody is above reproach. Everyone can have be criticized. All of us make mistakes. It sucks. But the best thing you can do when you mess up is apologize, show your audience and the people that are watching you that you've changed through actions, not just words, and be authentic to yourself. And don't place like don't put on a persona that's so incredibly different than who you are that you could be find, found out. And be transparent. More than anything, be transparent. It's so easy when you have a fictitious name and nobody on TV or there's no face on that screen to say terrible things. So I always think of, I always think of it this way. If I say something, I have to assume you guys are gonna see it. So I always try to be mindful of that. And then I also have to be mindful that sometimes you're going to see things that I say that you're not going to like, which is fine. I don't like everyone. You don't like everyone. It would be weird if we all liked each other. If you still don't like me, that's fine. If you like me, that's great. But I just wanted to remind everyone that while a lot of people are getting canceled right now, and while I've had my own feelings and my own sort of trying to digest all of the things that I've gone through in the last seven months, I just want to say that getting canceled is really stressful. Getting canceled is uh, panic inducing, it's anxiety ridden, and it's you feel like your world is crashing down. So while it's entertainment for some to watch people go through a cancellation, also try to re remember that some of the people being canceled are literally 
being targeted for no reason and others even if they were horrible people are still humans and honestly don't deserve to be dogpiled that's all i've got for now bye guys